Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Meet the Parents podcast. Before we get started, we'd like to bring a word from our amazing sponsors, NI Travel News. Yeah, NI Travel News is a newspaper and a website where you can, well, nitravelnews.com where you can get lots of brilliant information and deals about local and international travelling. We have been talking about doing a wee bit of writing for them at some stage, which we will do. Um, Sean was actually in Amsterdam last week with the comedians and the first one in bed so Sean could maybe write an article about how to go away and manage to not have any fun. Yeah. <laughs> Probably one of the only people ever to go to Amsterdam, Dan, and not take drugs. <laughs> Probably one of the yeah, only yeah, people of yeah. all time. Just like, no interest. Yeah. I was boring in the in the bar, me and two other guys just watching the football. That's and my that's, guy. That's the height of excitement. Well that's what we tell her anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've no idea what actually went on. Sean texted me, I'm in bed. Uh, so NI travelnews.com for all of um your brilliant deals. You can also go yeah. into their I'm gonna say it wrong like I did a second ago. Was it Ezine? 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 An e an Ezine. An Ezine. So instead of a magazine or an email, it's like an Ezine. And there's a new what, are, what the kids will think <laughs> yeah. of next. <laughs> yeah, basically a newsletter, and the newsletter's out every single Thursday that goes straight into your inbox, courtesy of the website, yeah. nitravelnews.com. You can sign up for that and uh, never miss a deal with yeah. your up to date local, national, and worldwide travel news alongside the latest competitions where you come on holidays and cruises and flights and whatnots. See everything you ever wanted to see with your two eyes. If you go into your local travel agent or your local Ground Espresso um, or your local airport or abroad or wherever you go to you should find this NI Travel News newspaper and inside the front cover is a picture of myself and yourself with the guys from NI Travel News behind us as well as we advertise uh, them being the sponsors on our podcast and if you look at the back cover too it's me Diona and some random wee lad on the beach on the beach I'm in my special cave swimsuit in Portrush so uh, <laughs> good times yeah so make sure you pick up a couple of that our, uh, our guest this week um, we've got a very exciting lady here to join us who's been hard to pin down because uh from here but hasn't lived here in quite a while and you will have seen her recently on your television screens from the traders it is the wonderful Diane hello how are you Diane? Hi, Diane how are you I'm fine thanks okay. yeah. you look great thank you, you very much great. as thanks. always I don't want to say that as if you just made a special effort for us well no you considering I just came out of a coffin <laughs> don't forget a few weeks I ago know. I know, so, I, know. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that like that is most people's real life fear is being put inside an actual coffin alive and you've experienced it mm, I have indeed what was that like well, I'm not claustrophobic, so that's okay. the first thing. So it was fine, really. It was mm. drama and props and Just all made part of the fabulous show. TV, really. Yeah. No, was the coffin made for that, or is that a coffin that will go on to be someone's coffin? No, I'm it? assuming it was made for the show, but okay. I don't know. Didn't ask yeah. any questions. Didn't ask to keep yes. it, though. Just... There were a few more at the side. I remember seeing that. Coffins? So yeah. So I'm assuming that a number of the contestants could have been put into them. Yeah. Definitely, Paul and I were going to. Evie was, was a mistake. She should never have been in that. And having seen, obviously, I couldn't see her because I was in my coffin. Yeah, 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 yeah. But looking at the TV screen, she obviously was very uncomfortable. She was yeah. shuffling around a lot. So she obviously found that very difficult. As and would. I would have said there'd be a few contestants that really wouldn't have managed that at all. Mm. But we were asked before we went on if we were claustrophobic, and I'm not. So, But I'm sure that would trigger some people like when you, you just go I could do that easily and then they put you inside a coffin and you're like I this is how it's going to end yeah, for me yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is me forever now oh yeah I completely get that actually when I came out I sort of said to my hubby who doesn't even watch reality TV and wasn't in the least bit interested <laughs> do you think there'd be some sort of um, comeback on that because my son has watched me in the coffin he went don't be daft and actually, the only um, there was one newspaper that complained said they were readers, but most people just thought it was great. Complained TV that you were in the yeah. coffin with my son throwing oh, okay. a flower into it, you know. But that was um, too that much. Was, yes. Okay. It's TV, Basically, though, it? it's, it's TV. TV. It's, it's it was a game. It yeah. was fun. How did your son yeah. feel? He thought it was great. He thought. <laughs> he, I he mean, like, he, he will bye. say, finally we've got it sorted. You know, <laughs> rang his brother. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, has somebody got a drill? Yeah. <laughs> a screwdriver. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's their sense of humour as well. You know, I get cards and things like, we've, we've served out your care home, mum, you know, and we're, you're on the euthanasia list. So I'm used, wow, <laughs> yes, Ted. And the funny thing was, I wanted to say, I wanted to say goodbye or something to him, you know, but obviously the other contestants didn't know he was. Your son. And oh, yeah. I thought if I say I love you, first of all, we don't particularly say that. We do right. say it occasionally, but we're not that sort of a family. And that would make and involve my mouth moving three times so that would be more chance of them seeing somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And equally, if I said that one, he'd get the shock of his life and two, might it 
upset him. Now, I didn't Aww. think it would, mm. but he is my son, so I just said bye. And then I wasn't in any way emotional at all. You know, I thought, what a good way to go. I've had an extra day. Yeah. But then they, as soon as they, the, what they did was the contestants turned their backs and people came flying over from the crew and everything, make sure it got out, make sure I was okay, because welfare is very strong on yeah, that, sure, yeah. Yeah. on the whole thing. And then I was taken off to a car, and there was somebody there, and they got me a coffee, and are you okay? And then somebody got in beside me, and I was mm -hmm. perfectly fine mm -hmm. until, until somebody said, now, is there anything I can get? Is everything okay? And I said, I just want you to make sure Ross... And then I got this oh, wee no. thing going on in my... Uh, now, look, I am, um, you know, it's they were all brought up with tough love. I were not like that. But I did catch myself going. Uh, now, they didn't know. I knew. And I, j um, <clears throat> just make sure he's okay. And I knew he would be as well. Yeah. But isn't that weird? Well, it's have not you talked about this since? Yeah, I as have. As a family, yeah, yeah, or yeah, to yeah, him? yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're yeah. not really an emotional person, then? No, I cry at sad movies, and I cry if I see people saying goodbye to each other in an airport. <laughs> even but not when I you're being lowered <laughs> in no, a coffin. No, 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 no. It's wild. I know. I oh, know. I'd love a psychologist <laughs> to be here right now. Yes. I'd love to know more about that. <laughs> Why do you not? I know. So you wouldn't get emotional about your own things and your own family normally, just like other people. Issues. And I get very emotional about my own kids, okay? Because I am passionate and will fight for them through everything. And I, you know, I remember my daughter had an ex-boyfriend, and I had warned her, by the way, about this lad. And I said he's not good because I am outspoken. But I have always said to them, if you want an opinion, come to me. If you yeah. want, um, you know, just advice, go to your dad because yeah. he's very good at saying these are all the options. But if you want, if you don't want an opinion, don't ask me. Yeah. So I gave her my opinion on this boyfriend, and anyway, he dumped her unceremoniously, and she finally became friends because my daughter's got the biggest heart in the world. Mm -hmm. And she became friends with him and thought it'd be okay for him to come back to her house and have a coffee, you know, and I would be accepting. I went, no, no, he won't be coming back to my house ever and don't think he will. Aye. And I'm afraid if you cross me, if any of my kids friends or, or partners cross me that's it and I don't forgive me right. from, against yeah. me forgive not honestly it's shocking but you can, you know that most teenage girls are like oh my god I'm so afraid for my boyfriend to meet my dad I can imagine it would have been I do not want him to meet my man. <laughs> she yeah. will go through him this is a really bad story I don't even know why I'm telling it except I thought it was funny at the time this <laughs> same boyfriend I did struggle with but I accepted that my daughter had fallen in love mm -hmm. and I would just have to get used to it this is obviously before he dumped her so um, I he came to the house and we all played Dungeons and Dragons and sometimes you can tell somebody you know that would actually be a great Dungeons and Dragon player so I said come come Diane come that is a sentence nobody <laughs> no, has ever said true <laughs> I'm <laughs> seriously so I said well, sorry, sorry before we go any further what are the qualities of a well, great Dungeons you need to be slightly eccentric sort of in, okay. in character and, and everything else. And I'm not saying I would guess everybody in a lineup. But I'm I'm generally quite good at spotting somebody that I think would really enjoy Dungeons and Dragons. So now, is this a board game? Is this Yeah, yeah, yeah. A you board play game? characters basically okay, and you okay. go out in quests, very much like Lord of the Rings, you know, mm -hmm. you're that sort of a character. Wow. And and I was right by the way, he did want to play Dungeons and Dragons. But anyway, he came to the house <laughs> and uh, my husband needed a wardrobe carrying, so I said, you know, can you come and help? Oh my God, did I get in the air. Why can't you be like a normal mum? Why did you have to get him doing jobs? Why could you not have made him a <laughs> cup of coffee or just said welcome? Why'd you do all that? And I went, oh, I thought I was like treating him like a member of the exactly. family. We'd all be working together. Anyway, next time it comes around, which, okay. I do think it's funny, but it's also maybe slightly embarrassing, but it's my sense of humour. So I just collected all these, you know, those little cards that you would have in an office with lines on them. So, you know, I would put my shopping list on them. Or a cue card so, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, so I collected a whole load and I brought hubby, who's quieter than me, just said, will you come and look at this? And the, the key went the lock and she appeared and I went, Welcome to my home. <laughs> and then flick through as if I was like, Daniel, now you oh! come through. No, actually, wait a second. Would you like a cup of... And then flick through again. Yeah, yeah. Would you like a cup of really warm tea? And I've got some really nice biscuits in there. And I continued on like that, honestly. She was she mortified, yeah. seething. <laughs> I, in my head, I'm laughing myself sore at this. I know it's really bad. And in the end, it was fine, you know, but she was 
why can't you be normal? That's all I'm asking you to be. I have a right. feeling that this funny. isn't an isolated incident and there's been many times. <laughs> well, maybe. But, you know, I also, I think as well, to get over things, because I wasn't keen... You have to use humour. Yeah. So for me, okay, maybe a wee bit at my daughter's expense, but you have to use humour to get through most things in yeah. life. You know, I um, I probably even probably should not be doing this in there. I was involved in a car accident two weeks ago and um, wow. nobody was hurt. Um, but I sort of I got photographs and um, I sort of thought when I looked at the photographs, oh, this isn't quite how I played it out. So I um, brought a friend who's very technical, very logical, who it was outside my running club. And we looked at all the photographs and um, she said, right, I can tell you what happened. It was round a, a mini roundabout. Basically, we're probably both at fault. And um, we went through it all and I'm a wee bit shaky in the next minute. Hello, it's Diane from the Traitors. And I was like, what? And this couple came flying over with a baby. And anyway, chat, chat, chat. Oh, you know, love Jane Traitors, love Traitors, so on and so forth. And that's great. Love chatting to people, chat all day. Mm -hmm. And then they said, we saw that running group down there. We wondered if it was yours. And I said, well, actually, it is my running group. But sadly, I've missed it today. I've just been involved in a car accident. Oh, my God. Do you know what? My daughter just had a baby this morning. Look, here's my phone. Can you do a video? And oh, I was boy. like, yeah, that's fine. I've been in a car accident, but certainly I'll do a video. Hello. Hi, are you? Good news on the baby. But actually. Like, do you know a solicitor? That, that made me laugh. And yeah, that, yeah. They did me a lot of good doing that. Yeah. Do you know, it's like that thing, isn't it? Because obviously now people are looking at you in a, as a, in a celebrity status. And all of a sudden, you're not human anymore. No, I know. Isn't that? I know. Yeah. It's just your, ri your rights are stripped yeah. of you. It's like your leg could have been hanging yeah. off there. And he'd have been like, would you hold that together so you can make but, a video? You know, I'm, I'm bleeding all over this room. Yeah. But that's fine, yeah. Oh, so hi. He's like, Diane's blood. Hi. Skip it up, skip yeah. it up. But actually, it made me laugh. So It, it did, honestly. Mm. And so therefore, it helped me actually get over the, the shock because people are funny no and choice. that was funny. And that yeah, gives yeah. me a good story as well. Yeah. But isn't it yeah. wild the way like people do? Like, just that's, that's it. If they think you're like a celebrity now, then that's it. They'll no longer. Well, I can't believe there are people actually. I mean, I know my local supermarket, two guys who work there have come up and they've blushed while they've been asking me for a photo. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, it's just me. Mm. I'm still just Diane. It's because it beforehand means... they used to take photographs without asking you. Without asking me, yes. <laughs> I didn't run dirty max. Hats pulled over their faces. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. Do you get recognised you know, often now? Not, not hugely. I now? mean, def I definitely didn't. St. Patrick's Day yeah. and I would have done I do more in London mm -hmm. um, but where I live um, no not really and everybody is so respectful if mm. they do my kids say people do and they can and they can see me particularly for running you know people going oh and they're sh not, you know, nudging each other and saying, yeah. oh, that's Diane. But I don't particularly notice. But we were, Ross and I were followed mm -hmm. in uh, London all the way down the road into a pub. And this lady said, is this weird? And I went, well, yeah, it is attached. Yeah. The woman who followed you said, yeah. is this weird? Yeah. yeah. Is this, yeah. It is, yeah. Can you please put your clothes back on? <laughs> <laughs> and it's quite chilly. And why are we all standing here with our clothes off? Yeah, exactly. We're in London. Um, is there anything, have you had anything weird yet? Like No, not really. No propositions? No, or? no God, no. I, I mean, no. I've put my phone number all over the place. Still haven't had a proposition. <laughs> You no, write it yourself in the back of the toilet door. Yes, yes. <laughs> Photographs of myself yeah. all over the place. Yeah, please like, bring this like number. Diane is up for Desperate. it. Desperate. Yeah. <laughs> Diane. No, every, and everybody has been absolutely lovely and respectful. And actually, somebody saw me running in Donegal Day yesterday and posted it on the Instagram account. My daughter really, do, I don't, not very technical, so she sort of manages mm -hmm. the Instagram account and then mentions whatever has happened. But I happened to be looking, this girl said, I saw you running along the main road in Donegal Day. Yeah. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, and um, I said, I'm trying to train back up because I haven't been doing as much running as I like. And then she said, I saw you in the cafe. But I didn't want to come disturb you. And mm. actually, I don't mind at all. You know, mm. come up for a chat. We we'll talk about traders. You know, yeah. that's yeah. absolutely fine. I'd rather but people. It's, sorry, sorry, go on. I'd rather people went came up and just said hi, yeah. rather than stirred or whispered yeah. to each other. In yeah, groups. I know. It's, I find people that are really... shy though. People sometimes feel like they'd be just annoying you, or they're just shy in general. So that mm. that's why. But then there's yet obviously the other people then who will approach you with yeah, the off. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the I've also extreme. seen people walking past with video cameras just. Video. Yeah, and I find that odd. Actually, yeah. here no. try having that happen to you when 
you're an all you can eat Chinese. Um, <laughs> remember a couple of years ago I saw someone's filming me and I have 12 different types of fried chicken in my mouth. <laughs> 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 Noodles hanging out of it. Yeah, that I'd rather they didn't do that, rather just came up and asked. But also yeah, I yeah. am just an ordinary person yeah. and, yeah. you know, the celebrity thing's just hilarious. So, so your son was in the traders with you and how, like, how has that changed your relationship with your son or if at all? No, not at all. We're exactly the same, you know. You have this unique thing now together, you know. That is the one thing. We have these memories together. And when he left, he asked the car if they could drop them off at my house right okay. and we honestly we went out and we must have talked for about eight hours now none of the rest of them would have had that and believe you yeah. me you need it because it's yeah. such a mind bending game and it's yeah. such an unusual experience yeah. and it was lovely having that and it was lovely having that against I suppose all the others particularly those traitors you know <laughs> I know um, so when you when you left then you didn't speak again until you were reconnected no when he left, no so, right? I knew you'd been kicked out because because our phones are taken off us mm. and I texted him WhatsApp him and of course you get the wee blue text yeah. so every day I would like to see if there'd been any blue text <sighs> right, right. and I knew when the ending would be so yeah. when I got the blue text and you'd been kicked out uh, it was like gutted you know yeah. but um, no we didn't speak at all but my god we went we talked a lot and drank a lot yeah. you know yeah. and we j- honestly and then you're right when you've got that experience everybody else is sort of you know sidelined yes yeah, so a wee bit did you, you just know. have a pact at all for like if, if one of you were to win what would happen to the money well or it's was funny it just... that actually because we decided well neither of us thought we'd ever win and I certainly knew I wasn't going to win I was lucky to last past two days really mm. being opinionated so we decided I said um, 50-50 yeah. and he said 60-40 um, <laughs> 60 40, right? And when he was in, I was thinking, because obviously I'm still hoping he might have got in. Is you that know, the text through. you sent him when you got kicked out? Yes, I was, I'm happy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I then had decided that it should be 60 40, really. And yeah. this is ridiculous, even thinking 50 50, because he's last, you know, he's played yeah, the yeah, good yeah. game. But oddly enough, I was like, oh my God, he had made the decision while he was still in that it would be 50 50. Uh, How good's that? Well, you've raised him well. You've raised I, him well, yeah. Well, I don't yeah. know. I think he's raised himself independently of <laughs> me because I can't produce such wise children. And he's yeah. very um, secure in himself. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. very confident. You've produced nice. You've produced a lot of performing children. Don't mm. I seem to have, yes. What has happened there? So your son is Kerr. Mm. Yeah, Kerr Logan. Uh, Kerr yeah. Logan, who, is mm-hmm. in, who was in Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah um, your yeah. daughter, Lisa, who I've been communicating yeah. with, is also an actress. Yes. Boss yeah, is in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Was Ross do outside it before he the He set up his own um, video company so he actually went to the Leeds College of Music and um, apparently he was going to drop out in third year but he could hear his mother's voice in his ear and he realised that would be a mistake (laughs) so apparently that's the only reason he stayed on oh right Um, but that's what he he decided he didn't want to do that now he sings and he can make music on machines or whatever that's called but um, he came home and was staying with me and said, right, he had to manage this studio in Blackpool um, for friends. And what he wanted to do was find a company and get a job and train up and then set up his own business. And that's basically more or less what he has done. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, real, I'm really proud of him. Also, he, he works hard. He plays very hard, yeah. but he also works very hard as well. So whenever your kids were away, so obviously like... You're, and your your kids who are actors are also married to actors, isn't yes. that right? Mm. So yeah. she's like, what? Was that a rule, was it? Was it <laughs> 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 oh, God, no, I didn't want my daughter. My daughter yeah. said to me she wants to be an actress, and I said, no, you don't. Yeah. She's a bright girl, and I thought, no, no, you need to go and earn money. And Those be a stupid actresses. Stupid, you, know? <laughs> you need to do yeah. this, and it'd be very hard life. And then she was in, uh, she played Laurie in Oklahoma, because uh-huh. she's a singer as well in our local theatre in Lytham. And they were all the all the kids were great, but my God, she was lit up. Uh, she was animated. And I sat but then and does I every parent her. say that about their child? Though, do you know what I mean? Was she was she that a, good? I have a feeling no, no, Diane no, no, all, would still tell her kids all. if they were shit. Yeah, well, so <laughs> yeah, maybe true, a wee yeah. bit, you know. But then they know that the compliments are amazing. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. Like, see, you see, so no, she was animated. They were all good. Um, and I just thought, right, I need to shut up because nobody stopped me being a teacher. Yeah. You know, mm. and when she did, um, she was um, Liza Doolittle in, um, what is that, Fair La- My Fair Lady. I went to see that three or four times and I cried uh. every time because I was so proud of her. That's brilliant. You know, brilliant. and then I realised she was actually a, a comic. I didn't realise that because my eldest boy, Care Logan. Yeah. Michael, he's called. He did London Irish. Did you ever watch yeah, London yeah, Irish? Yeah, of course, yeah. I yeah. think that is one.
one of the funniest programs on TV. It's brilliant. Yeah. But it didn't translate across to English. And I think it's because of all the bad. This is only my opinion. No, in saying that, I think <clears> the since language. Dairy Girls, it's had a research and people have sort of watched it a lot again because it's obviously written have by Lisa they? McGee. Yeah, yeah, people yeah, have yeah, found a love for yeah. it again. Now, at the time, people just didn't appreciate it. But now that people are seeing, like, Dairy Girls especially, yeah. they're like, oh, a bit more tuned into our accent yeah. now. And I think it has found a second Well, that wave. would be great because then they said they wouldn't do a second series. But my God, he is naturally He's hell. very good. Hilarious. No, but he's just very funny mm. and they keep putting him up for these parts where he's just quite vile, really. Um, he was in Alias Grace and he had to, um, well, he was part of a murder and he had to... Oh my to God, that's right. Jump he was on a girl, Grace. yeah. And then strike. I mean, he got, you know, social media stuff about being the horrible husband, uh, mm. you know. And oh my God, I completely forgot he was in there. But he's, he's in these he serious brilliant. things. That, yeah, he's naturally funny, whereas I always thought Lisa was more serious. Absolutely not. She <laughs> had all the audience crying with laughter when that's she did brilliant. Liza Doolittle. Yeah. And I didn't realise that. You know, so mm. I th- I just wish somebody would give Michael a really <laughs> comic part. Well, because he is so funny. What's he doing this Christmas? Does he do well, <laughs> <laughs> Does he want to be in our new show? <laughs> well, would you believe I have been offered a pantomime in uh, Blackpool? Stop. In Are you doing it? <laughs> Course. Oh my god! But I can't act, and I have told them I can't act. So it's sort of loosely based because we need to be very careful about what we do regarding traitors. Yes, out and about, stuff. You know, yeah, exactly. Um, they wanted me to sing, which is a no-no. I may have singing kids. I don't sing, right. and I mean I really can't sing. But then they said, "Can you rap?" And I said, "Well, probably not, <laughs> but I don't mind trying." Yeah. But I said I cannot act. So don't think you're going to have natural... T- but it's, They'll probably want you to play me. you. Yeah, that's That's why they've got you. They yeah. want you rather yeah, than yeah, getting yeah. you to play a witch or a yeah, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, So there you go. So you'll do that <laughs> really? for like two months? No, it's a half term. It's using the Funny Girls venue, basically, mm-hmm. um, because it's empty half of the week, I think. So it's during... It is actually for kids, but okay. I'm sure there'll be a few innuendos. There and usually And it'll is. be during half term. So I've agreed to this. I've never acted on stage stage in my life I don't mind standing in front and speaking to millions of people mm-hmm. that doesn't worry me but acting mm. anyway no you're right they say they want me to just you be you seem me. like the kind of person though that thrives at a good challenge like well you're yes. almost up for anything I like way. a challenge yeah. Yeah. yeah but not singing in public that just, is a just challenge not that's one step see we far. end our episode every week with person doing karaoke with our oh, guest oh do you indeed yeah, right that's... well I'll watch you both <laughs> and clap a lot <laughs> you'll give us critique at the end yeah, yeah. <laughs> tough love yeah <laughs> What are what are the things that are on your bucket list that you would love to do? Because you do you're obviously like an outdoorsy person. You run a lot. You've seen you're very fit and you've got like a lot of bite on you. What are the things you're like right? Because even doing the traders is something absolutely mad. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's a wild thing to do. You said as well when we were going for coffee, you've never done a marathon. No, would you I ever haven't. do a marathon or do you feel no? Like I think it's just um, not for you? I would like to do an eighteen mile run. I know that's very specific, mm. but I think eighteen miles. I'm not going that? to. I don't know. I have no idea. Although you said you golf, is it a mile uh, for every hole? Well, are there eighteen <laughs> holes? Are there eighteen all good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the way I play, yeah. <laughs> Still training on that. No, um, I half marathon. I did my first half marathon trail uh, just before I went into the t- into Tough Mudder. I was dead proud of the results because I came in quite quickly, which I I didn't. It was quite slow, but compared to some of the ladies, I was really proud because I'm quite competitive. Um, I'm still, somebody sort of suggests that the Ross and I did something like hunted or race across the world. Oh, yeah. We have no sense of direction. It would be so That's what makes it funny. Yeah. Yeah. We would yeah. have such a laugh doing that. Yeah. Way out of That'd my comfort class. zone and his, but we honestly, my God, would it be funny? We can't get from A to B yeah. without like, getting lost. The <laughs> rest of them can, but we yeah. have just no sense of direction. Yeah. I read a thing yesterday, the, the other day, and I keep saying that, but I I seen a TikTok video, and it was like, <laughs> um, you know, whenever like being married is your your wife never knowing where her phone is or how to get anywhere, but she will know where absolutely everything is in every cupboard in the house. Yeah, that's and all right. You, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you could phone me and go, where is it? And I'll be like, I know what cupboard it is, I know what drawer it's on, yeah, I know where that lives yeah, right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. but I do not know where my phone is no, or how to get down know, the road. I know, I yeah. know. But I keep casually just placing things somewhere and then it drives me insane. I, I have to actually tell the oh owner, I'm like, God. I have a, 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 like saying a letter comes in that we have to tax our car or something and I'm like, please, please, will you not touch this? I'm going to leave it right here. <laughs> it might take me four months to like actually... Yeah, I know. But, 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 but yeah, as soon as it's gone, I, I just forget I know, it exists. I know, I know. 
Uh, but if that was the case, we would have lots of shit just sitting by the front door that you're going to get to. Yeah, exactly. That but happens I'm, as well. But I tidy everything up, but I lose yeah. my phone. But I've learned a trick from a girl that I run with. And what you do is if you lose something, you may have heard of this, it works. Oh, my God, does it work? You say, St. Anthony, <clears throat> can you help me find whatever it is? Uh, you can find it. Do you think right. so? Uh, it has worked since I've been told so he, that. So he's what, the patron saint of... Finding not, things. Finding things, obviously. Finding things. I've no Lost idea things. patron right. saint, but my God. And then you must say thank you, St. Anthony, for right. helping me find whatever. Oh, Do my God, Do you when you go works. to heaven? <laughs> is St. Anthony just If working? I get to heaven, of course, yeah. there's a big out there. Do you think when you go to heaven, is St. Anthony just sitting working in the lost and found? <laughs> Do you know you go and draw all this in a yeah, lost ring in 1962? Do you get out of your coffin and Claudia Winkleman's there? <laughs> yeah, that'd be all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how did you raise kids to be, like, to, to excel? And I imagine they're all doing what they love. Well, no, Lisa, my daughter is still, she's, it, the acting world was fine for a while, particularly, and she did um, musical theatre and it was fabulous and mm. she did a lot of touring around and everything, um, but there was um, an incident which I probably would be killed at for sharing um, and she wasn't treated very well um, by a particular individual and acting sort of just slipped by and she struggled with that. She. Mm. Not with acting, that is her passion and is still her passion. With the industry? But to be, yeah. With everything she does, she excels. And I'm not just saying that, by the way, mm -hmm. because uh, it is tough love and you're right. I am critical as well. She excels with everything she does. Um, I mean, if you consider that she's now doing my Instagram, so I had five followers. Um, I was yeah. on Instagram to follow Ross and my stepdaughter who does skincare. And um, then I posted my photographs of um, results and runs because I was just pleased with them. And I then got 10 followers and I was like, oh, my God, I don't know half these people. <laughs> and now we're, I think we've hit 73,000. She's on it. She's sorting it. Yeah. Um, she does casting for the West End as well. She's done that. And they've just moved out of London. She was offered a full time job in London doing casting. Whatever she does, yeah. she's also writing a musical, um, and it's happens by coincidence to be mm -hmm. to do with death. And they were looking for sponsorship last year. They got to the finals for that. Everything she puts her hand to, she yeah. just excels in. So you never know because I the one thing about the traitors for me um, has been if we can do things that take the family with us, you know, we can involve all members. Yeah, that will be phenomenal for mm. me. And yeah. as long as we're all having fun, because they let me tell you, the public have been very generous as well with gifts. And we've got the odd hotel um, evening to go to. And, yeah. you know, as long as we're all experiencing and having fun. That is brilliant. But that's it. And it's like you there's never perks, know what's, isn't there? Exactly. Yeah. And you never know what's around the corner. What mm. would you would you ever do? Because it seems like you have such a, and I mean this in the best way, mental household. It feels like all your kids are like in TV shows and like just like everyone seems eccentric. You're all playing Dungeons and Dragons. Like it's all mad. And you're cooking a shit Sunday roast or whatever you're doing. And it, Probably. Yeah. But then it, would you what about like would you do a reality show? Because I feel like that would be very entertaining. We would have so much fun with that because as well, you know, there was one Christmas, for example, we nearly all died and I kid you not, we just bought our house and so you're um No well do you know that's nearly happened but no no not my cooking this particular time um basically all the flexes were melting on the top floor and um we What's were the just the 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 flex the wires for all the plugs oh, and right, everything yeah. basically for all the electrics yeah. right mm -hmm. and um we'd bought the house we hadn't been in it long and it was a doer up and we appreciated all that and we did some work on it and um anyway we just about to serve up the dinner and um <laughs> all the lights went off and you know that it's a bit stressful um, serving up dinner all together, particularly Christmas. So we just basically ran around, you know, first of all, trying to find out what the problem might be. But there were only two sober people, one being my husband and my daughter-in-law who was pregnant. <laughs> so we were all like, oh, dear, let's run around. Let's get candles. We got some candles. And then my stepdaughter, my daughter-in-law was drawn to a plug socket. It was a light switch and it got really hot. My husband opened it, took it off the wall and all this smoke billowed up out and I'm like oh my god and then I sent a shitty e a text to the builder um, just we sat down had our dinner I sent off this text and the electrician didn't drink because I got a tummy problem he came around Christmas night meanwhile we're all sitting playing stupid board games <laughs> and uh, we're all with our our uh, 
phone, you know, like a torch. Yeah. yeah. And uh, my stepson, who is um, English, he was like, you lot are the maddest people in the world. You know, you have no lights. You're sitting here. The electrician comes in. <laughs> and then my Michael decided to sing songs, hymns, carols. But instead of singing about Jesus, he was changing the word to electrician while the electrician's in the corner <laughs> looking at the fuse box. I'm going, stop it, knock it in the head. And basically he went upstairs and all our flex that has, had, I said, mm-hmm. melted together. And he said we'd all have died that night no. because <gasps> we'd have inhaled all the various yeah, whatever yeah. it was that would have caused this like problem. Toxic but error. we're like, this is another great story for Chris. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> I know, but That's as I said to it? you, if you don't laugh, you know, you're yeah. We would have died because we procrastinate that much that we'd have went, we'll call him next week and we'll yeah. just, after six oh, o'clock, we'll no. just have candles. Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, but if he had been drinking, we wouldn't have yeah, seen yeah. him out, you know. And I my know hubby why. is a DIY man, but he wouldn't necessarily know known we'd have all died that or night. Or if he liked his family and not left his house on Christmas Day exactly. and came to your house. Exactly, exactly. And then the Christmas as well, you know, this has got videos of this because we are very naughty. Um, we were watching Traitor, so watch one episode before I went on. We'd all got really ill, and we'd all got, you know, tummy and running to the loo, and really, really ill, so we're all lying around. And the last person to get it was my son-in-law. We're all chirpy now because we're all, we're all getting through. better. Yeah. And there's a video of him lying on the couch, and we've decided to play sardines, as you do, so we're running around the house. And there's a video of him sitting there, and he gets his video out, and I said, I'm trying to have a little piece, bit of peace and quiet, but the family have decided to play sardines. And then he pans up, and there are four of us in behind him, behind the cushions, <laughs> on top of him on his shoulders, <laughs> just still playing sardines while he's sort of thrown up. <laughs> in a bit, you know. We we just we have so much fun. Are you like together. a wee cult? <laughs> well, it does look that way. We're also very. I like to think we're very embraceful of other people coming yeah. in. I have been told no, we're quite close. We just, you know, my sixtieth. Well, they were going to get me apparently to New York. It was in COVID. Now how they were going to get me to an airport with a suitcase appropriate for clothes for New York and a mm. passport. I have no idea. Without you knowing, without me knowing, okay. it was a surprise. So <clears throat> we had to cancel all that COVID we hired a house up in, um, York, near York as in England and um, it was American themed so everybody was in costume even they got my husband to dress up as a hot dog and he doesn't Jeez. do things like right. that you know <laughs> And they did a treasure hunt because we did this. They did it like, um, I don't know, off the cuff one time in France. And everybody is a character. And I had to run around solving the clues. So there were gangsters, there were tarot readers, there was the hot dog. And, you know, it (laughs) continued on like that. And we had so much fun. And you're right, it is just us having fun but Sean, we are doing, very that's, that's all that matters we're, Dan that's all that matters doing, yeah. we're doing family we're time wrong yeah, yeah. we're feeling <laughs> we're no, watching the not, office yeah. <laughs> that's what we're doing we're wasting so much of our own time <laughs> we have you've mentioned more games today than I've heard of <laughs> we argue as well when we're playing board games particularly Michael and I we oh, really? do go head to head and we play code names have you ever heard of code names well, yeah, it's, he's it's, it's <laughs> very, <laughs> it's very complicated. But basically, you have to point to clues without doing anything. You point to clues, you say one word, and that is it. But you know, and then you want your team to sort of point to the cards that you've pointed to. So my team generally girls versus boys. It, it's obviously a lot more complicated than that. It's not it's a simple game, but it takes me just six yeah. rules. And my girls are going to point to the card, and I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have a completely straight face oh Michael gets so cross on me and I'm not right mum go out of the room and it continues on like that but when we're all getting on together yeah. it's fine it really is what's it been like Like you, that sounds like so whenever your kids are really wee like it seems to be like you know you play lots of games and all, but obviously you're all adults now and you're still enjoying that like family time where you play games all together which I think is class because lots of families lose that when the kids grow but up I, yeah. yeah I think all I think a lot of, of adults lose the way the of playing and you know look I'm Irish I can drink with the best of them but mm-hmm. you know half cut lying around isn't necessarily always the way to play you can still have loads of fun yeah. playing silly things and being silly and I love it and I mean I embrace you know bringing my friends in as well when I came in Ireland when I lived here mm-hmm. every Chris Easter Sunday we'd go to Tullymore 
we'd go yeah. with a picnic and roll eggs and everything, and we played a game of football. And when Brilliant. I went to England, I brought in, um, you know, my English friends to come and do this one year. There were 30 of us, and it sort of increased a little But now my friends have died off, actually. Not died, but <laughs> gone off to do their own things. <laughs> no, not died, but actually gone off oh, to do their own bits and pieces. Dead. But yes, hurrah! <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's just a group of us, and my husband has made cornhole boards. You know what cornhole yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, so he's another night. Another day, well, yeah, he's yeah. made them. He made them for Michael and Sarah's wedding. She's Scottish, so there was a Scottish one and an Irish one. So they're loaded up on a big trolley. Because <laughs> my son-in-law said we look like the hillbillies. And we arrive at a park in Lancaster. And we have got, we wrap up our sandwiches for a picnic like my dad used to do. He used to wrap them up in tinfoil mm-hmm. and sellotape our names to each one because they're all a bit fussy. We've all boiled our eggs. We've all painted them. Mm-hmm. We go along now with all of this. I've now included um, a parachute and we have we do duck racing. But before we go on to the duck racing, we then do, we eat our picnic and there's maybe a little bit of alcohol involved, but that's okay. <laughs> we're not daft. And then we do um, an Easter egg hunt. So we've got chocolate hidden. We're still doing this. We would have done this without children, by the way. We're all in two teams. And the captain of each team has to give a motivational talk, which is a load of nonsense. And then you have to pick an animal. And the captain, for example, you might be a monkey. That's their team. And the other team, generally boys versus girls. And then the girls will pick something. And then you run around, you find the eggs and you stop where the egg is and you make the noise. So yeah. if you're a monkey, you'd always go, whoa! And you're not to touch the egg, but the captain is allowed to go and pick up the chocolate. But then my boys run off with team members and go and hide them, butchers and dump them (laughs) or steal the chocolate. So we do that. Then we play our parachute games. We play cornhole and then we do duck racing now. So we came across duck racing in the Cotswolds. It is amazing. Everybody has With a duck. actual duck? Oh, no. Plus rubber ducks. Oh, okay. Mm. And we've got two ginormous ones. Don't ask me why, but we do. So Ross has a DJ duck because he does music. Michael was in A Fisherman. I've forgotten the name of it. Uh, it was a TV series. He was a fisherman, so he's got a fisherman duck. My husband likes chilies. He's got a hot duck. Uh, Lisa's got a red wine duck. Her husband's got Star Wars duck. And it continues on. Yeah. And then we do duck racing. Regardless of how cold it is, my husband's in with a net catching all the ducks at the end. And then we stop off for a drink on the way home, go home and have sausages and chips or whatever. Where do you store all, store all your props? Loft. Because <laughs> <laughs> you seem to have a lot of things. We do, yeah. Yeah, but I was a teacher as well, primary teacher. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I also taught drama and you collect everything. I had a suitcase of hats as well. And now I've got a suitcase <laughs> of animal hats just for the grandchildren to play. What do you mean animal hats? So like, well, their hat, you know, so the ears would be. So if oh, it was an elephant, you would Oh, not for animals? No, no, for not for animals. The they are actual animals. <laughs> I was like, you couldn't get a cat. I couldn't yeah. get our cat to wear a hat. Because we did International Day. Now, this is great for children. This is so much fun. You don't have to obviously do it with children, but we started doing it with children, obviously, because we've got grandchildren now. Mm-hmm. So you decorate rooms in your house. You have International Day. So each room. So, for example, we did um, a day at the races. Yeah. So we've got Escalado. Do you know what Escalado is? No, but I'm a feeling you're about to let us know and I'm looking forward so to it. So basically it's like a piece of green cloth and you wind it up. It's an old, old game and it sort of vibrates because the other side's attached to the table with elastic and you've got horses on it and because you're winding it, it vibrates the horses up so you can bet on it. Uh, yes, okay. Obviously you bet chocolate coins if you're yeah, playing yeah. a few ones. And we've got some, I have downloaded music that mention horses, you know, like Crazy Horses, mm-hmm. Billy Osmonds and so on. Mm-hmm. And then you eat strawberries and chocolate. And obviously the adults could drink champagne or Prosecco. Then we went on to Iceland. And I think it was sort of Christmas. So we decorated um, gingerbread houses. No, that was Toyland. Toyland. And whatever music we played, we played, we just decorated the gingerbread men. Then we went to Iceland because I've got my reindeer hats. We had reindeer races up and down the kitchen. (laughs) And then we did ancient Greece. And you have to have the music and the food. I think we just grilled some halloumi, which it probably isn't Greek. But anyway, we did that. And then we had to, we had to, uh, we were all d- in, divided into teams and we were all given toilet paper and we had to make togas you know like just yeah, parading yeah, yeah. up mm-hmm. and down in ancient togas and then we had to judge them and so it goes and then we ended off with the Baileys Irish we're in Ireland now and we did some Irish dancing and drank Baileys 
Probably. You never need to leave the house. <laughs> That's amazing. Genuinely, we will fund your reality series. Is like that the same this needs to happen? I want in on that. I want in on uh, it. Yeah, yeah. You, do you know what you could do? You could do a YouTube channel of drunk games. Yeah. <laughs> and every week playing your game with the bottle of wine. Oh, no, not drunk. That'd be horrendous. That's, That's even worse. Content. That's even more yeah. mad if we're drunk. No, I'm not kidding you. So, do you know once we did this is awful? This, I shouldn't even be telling you this. On the ferry, we booked into the lounge. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can have some drink. There yeah. were no kids involved. I like to say, <laughs> okay, it was just adults. Ross was there as well. And um, my Scottish friend was coming over to Ireland. This is before COVID. And we played games because I will always have games. I've generally a pack of cards, something in my bag. And um, one of them said, what we do now? And my Scottish friend flippantly said, let's let's play hide and seek. And I went, <laughs> That's a great game. <laughs> and of course, there are all these signs saying we appreciate respectful yeah, passengers. Don't play. <laughs> yeah, it's we a quiet area. We ran it around, not loudly, but we were still running around. Ross was just spread out on the floor beside somebody reading his newspaper. <laughs> and his girlfriend went into the toilet. I went in with a video camera because all this is videoed. Yeah. Because I've done a wee voiceover now. I think that she's in this toilet. So I'm just going to go in. I had the video camera in front of me. I'm now looking underneath the uh, doors <laughs> to check. And I knew there was a locked one and there were no feet. I knew she was crouched on top of the toilet. <laughs> and we did do that. Isn't that, sh- that Was is she in there? Bad. Yeah, she was. You're lucky it was I her. Knew. I know Not I somebody who's afraid of I know yeah. this and that really bad. <laughs> and then the next time we came over, I said to my husband, right, we're going to stage it. We're going to pretend because he hates games by the way as well. We're going to no. pretend. How is, how is this? No, I know, he, I, know, I, know. I know. We're going to pretend. So I want you to say, right, we're playing games. Oh, I'm bored with this. Let's play hide and seek. No, he just walked around. And then he basically stood behind a coat rack. So he wasn't <laughs> hiding at all. <laughs> just because it was funny yeah I know so I know. now that you're so obviously like you, your kids are older now but you seem to all have a, such a close relationship because you obviously like <laughs> see each other a lot and play games and have all these fun times how do you feel now that they're because I I remember my mum talking about like empty nest syndrome like you know like whenever we moved out of the house and she feels almost at a loss at times and I remember like being a, like a teenager and going for like for my first sleep before my mum I tried to help me pack my bag and I was like I can do it by myself and she oh, went no. off and got upset in the oh, other no. room because she oh, was no. like I'm so I just wanted to help yeah, you and you still seem to have like this playful relationship with your mm. kids even though they're older but do, is there like are you like delighted that they're grown up and moved out and this is like the new stage <laughs> or do you miss them being in the house um, well the first time <clears throat> excuse me the first when Lisa went um, my daughter oh it was like a, it was like a bereavement uh-huh. She's I the will oldest, never yeah. forget that it was horrendous and her mm. dad because we're, we're I'm so, uh, divorced from her dad and Michael's dad but we're still great friends. Yeah. Uh, he lives in Belfast with, with his wife. And we spent St. Patrick's Day together, by the way, all of us. Uh-huh. Um, and he was coming to take her down to London. And I was, we were holding each other mm. and crying like babies. And my husband, my actual husband came into the hall and he went, ha! <laughs> he's very dry humour and then we looked at him she and looked, he was laughing he's crying yeah oh. and then we looked at him and looked at each other and we started laughing because uh. we were being ridiculous <laughs> and then my friend came around she was collecting just for I don't know some some charity a couple of days later and she came around to my house and I came to the door and said oh god what's wrong with you you don't look great at all and I said Lisa's gone. She went, oh, for God's sake, she's not dead. <laughs> so when she had a wee one when she was 40. So when her wee one left a couple of years ago to go to university, I came around to the house and said, no, I'm not going to mention <laughs> yeah, anything yeah. about Karma. how sad it is that yeah. your daughter's gone. And then when Ross went... I think it it was okay because he had only gone to, to Leeds, um, and it, it and you'd I'd done just, it already. I'd sort of done it already, you know. And he's your least got, favorite. So. No. <laughs> 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 no, I somebody said to me, "Who's your favorite?" I'm always asked that, and I said, "Whoever's annoyed me the least, that at day. The, the most, is my mm. favorite," and so on and so forth. Do you have a um, favorite right now? Favorite. Of any of your children? All of them. That's not true. All. <laughs> 
I think you just love them all and then sometimes one of them annoys you and then yeah. you don't like them as much maybe but you love them all equally yes. absolutely yeah, course, and that yeah. will never change yeah. but we do you know we're in each other's company a lot and now I've got my daughter living with me anyway with her husband and, and yeah. child while they're waiting to move um, home so that will be probably another grieving period <laughs> when they leave yeah. that must be lovely though living with your grandson for a wee yeah, while where you get to spend because like that's yeah. not an experience most grandparents no, get to have no I know it's absolutely fab because my you know being in Ireland my mum and dad lived five minutes away yeah mm -hmm. they yeah. were involved in it's every aspect of my kids yeah. lives so yeah. when I wasn't able to get out of school they went to all their assemblies you know when Lisa sang they'd be, my dad would be there with his video camera and it was fabulous because yeah. it's great when parents can be so much a big part of their lives it's just amazing but that's the thing about like because uh, I, I live two hours away from my parents so I didn't live near my but we used to see each other regularly and they, they're obviously in, involved in my kids lives but as regards like that everyday aspect they don't get that with their grandkids and no, they really are sad about that at times because yeah. they're like oh, they wish they could see them every day or see them even a couple times yeah, a week or it was much yeah. easier it's four hours drive there and back you know, know you can't do that I that know. often especially with tiny kids exactly but it's that whole idea of like it takes a village to raise your kids and your kids need like lots of people around them to sort yeah. of for that just for like a, that wee community of people yeah, that can it's help it's so you. important if yeah. you can I mean I'm living with um, my friends and their kids live well, one's at home, but the other two live very close. But they they pick up the children, the grandchildren, mm. every day. Brilliant. And I have these wee boys running around, you know, in the <laughs> house at yeah. the moment. And I'm there's part of me that's envious of that. Actually, I know I've got my wee one at home, you know, now. But um, I'll be yeah. when they go, it'll be back to ones in Scotland, yeah. ones in London. One will hopefully be down south, and my stepdaughter's also down south. She was in Canada as well for a few years, you know. Yeah. And I am so I'm. I don't want to be envious, but I am a wee bit envious because it's so delightful watching them all together. I know. It's like a second mum and dad. They're I just, know. you know. Get, I know, and they, and they get to be involved so much and uh, know uh, their routines uh, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of kids yeah. as well, I know. Yeah. Because I don't know how you'll feel because Sean's eldest, I, I have three stepsons as well, as well. So we've, Sean has five kids and we've, we've two between us, two together. But your, your eldest, his eldest is at university too. But it almost feels like everything is really gradual because you've like an adult child and a baby. So I feel like yeah. there'll never really be a time. Like you'll, it'll be a long time before the last one moves out. Do you know what I mean? A long, so, long yeah. time. <laughs> a long, long so by that time, stage, yeah. I don't think you'll be feeling empty nest. You'll be like... Fucking yeah. this nest is great. See, speaking of the pandemic too, my oldest son James, he because we were almost like all locked up together for like a year or two, it was like the big brother house almost. <laughs> and then it just got to the point where once lockdown eased, he was gone. He was yeah. out with his friends all the time. Yeah. yeah. So then he went from that to university. So it was almost like a gradual a process. Gradual transition. It wasn't like just bang, here you go. No, no. And no, he lives no, with no. his mum half the week too. So there was, yeah. you know, there was uh, always yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, coming yeah. and going. I'd yeah. be de I'll be devastated. I I was yeah. I was taking my daughter to nursery the other day. She's two and she had a wee back a wee Peppa Pig backpack on her back and she was walking through the driveway to get into the car. My mum was actually down in our house that day and my mommy started doing their ABBA song, she started going school <laughs> And my mum and I was all, I'll fucking cry my eyes. Don't you dare <laughs> sing it to me. Do you know what I mean? So, but your wee child growing up and moving on, and I will, I'll be, I'll be devastated when she goes. No, ask me again in twenty years, Diane. And I'll be like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back at Christmas and we'll play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so what are the what are the ambitions for the future then? You're just uh, see, seeing how this newfound fame pans out, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you have to remember, I went on it for a laugh. Exactly. Um, didn't yeah. expect to get on, so I didn't expect bonus. to survive, yeah. and all of this is just mad. So yeah. you know, people say. Well, what what's what's next? Um, I have no idea. You know, I genuinely I'm still think a show would do really getting well. Getting over oh, yeah. all of this, you yeah. know. Yeah. So, um, as I said, if someone could take the family through, that would be amazing. Yeah. I mean, they are discussing bits and pieces, but um, I yeah. don't know. I am still just bemused by all of it. Mm. So, you're all doing Tough Mudder soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've got um, Tough Mudder lined up with um, most of the traitors. And if they're not taking part, they'll be there to support us. And all my family are doing it as well with us. So we're mm -hmm. raising money for Alzheimer's uh, research. Um, we did it years ago. Uh, my dad had Alzheimer's. And, um, and to be fair... We didn't know enough about it. And also my dad was really nutty man. He was so much fun, such a big personality. And I think there were signs, you know, at the, which we didn't actually realise. It's yeah. when you're looking back. So I think research is so important for this mm -hmm. because it's one of the worst conditions ever. 
Um, so anything I can do to raise money for Alzheimer's, we will yeah. be doing. So we, That's it great. is on my Instagram account, and then it will be hopefully on the rest of the traders as well to raise money. The link is on your Instagram. Yes, it is. To donate. Yes, Brilliant. yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's your Instagram handle, Dan? Can you remember? Uh, <laughs> yeah, your daughter. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I actually pause. No, I think it's, you know. it's Diane, aka Mom. It is. It which is. is the funniest okay. thing ever because when I did set it up, you know, when we were talking earlier, and I had five people following me, <laughs> um, Mom, because I only ever wanted to be a mom, and now apparently I'm the mom of the nation. Ah, uh, it's not weird as that. But I'm the drunk best friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, thank you very much for coming on. Yes, it's been thank you. Been a pleasure. Yes, so. um, just you. to let everyone know as well that Sunny Side Up is in the Lyric, the 10th to the 20th of April. It is our new show that I have written, one woman show, dark comedy, about a couple going through a fertility struggle to have kids. It should be very funny and also very heartbreaking at times. It would be great to see some people there. Well, uh, not there will be people there. Yeah. There's some of you guys there. Yeah. And doing is going to be out of the house six nights a week, so if anybody wants to play mini golf on VR, hit me up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Diane. Thank you. <laughs> 